Hello and welcome to chapter two of the corporate finance course at Judson. We're going to be looking at some accounting terms and accounting is uh, something that gets uh, some people all uh, excited uh, in a bad way and that it's uh, fear inducing. But there are two ways of looking at numbers, uh, business numbers. One is the from an accountant's point of view and the other way is from the um, uh, cash flow point of view. We're trying to try and contrast those two approaches to the same numbers and we're counting two different things. We're actually uh, looking for uh, different ways to diagnose the health of the corporation. And so here in chapter two, we're going to be looking at some tools which are common to all businesses, publicly traded or privately held. And we're going to uh, look at some important parts. Now, here are these basic financial statements are shown here, income statement, um, the balance sheet and statement of cash flows. The statement of retained earnings is not one of the three primary uh, basic financial statements. There are five actually, the income statement, statement of retained earnings, balance sheet, and statement of cash flow, and the auditor statement. Those five are the primary ones and the three within that that's basic are income statement, balance sheet, and statement of cash flows. The income statement is designed to measure the profitability of a firm over a period of time, usually a quarter or over an entire year, fiscal year, it is from start to finish, so it is a kind of like a movie looking at all the accumulated impacts of uh, uh, income and expenses over that period of time that's being measured. And here we see the different things that uh, in general it's being measured. We have sales, also known as revenue, minus the cost of goods sold equals the gross profit, GP or gross profit minus expenses, earnings, EBIT or operating income, and EBIT minus interest equals earnings before taxes. Now operating income is very important because it's for the core purpose of the business, not the other sources of revenue. And so one way of accounting for all those things. Here on this income statement we see it all in order and you see sales always at the top, net income always at the bottom. And uh, first we take out the cost of goods sold, then we uh, take out uh, overhead expense or selling and administrative expense, then uh, depreciation, and then we have operating profit or operating income, take out interest, and then that gives us taxable income. Taxable income minus taxes uh, leads down to net income. Three primary sources of capital, in other words, three ways that the business is financed, is through either money that's lent or bonds or money which is invested or stock. Uh, two times that stockholders mentioned here are preferred stockholders and common stockholders. Common stockholders are the last to receive any profits. Uh, they also get to vote uh, their shares. The others do not get to vote their shares. The statement of retained earnings is a part of the uh, balance sheet, at least it includes some information from there. It's the disposition of earnings, both in the past and in the current period. So we see that on this example, we have retained earnings, so that's the cumulative balance up until now, in this case before uh, New Year's Day 2010. But then this during 2010, it's adding $100,000 minus the dividends. We have a net then of 300,000. The price to earnings ratio is a very important number. It helps to figure out the price uh, and the value of the corporation. And also it may indicate about the future. Well, you look at a, let's say, take a price to earnings ratio of, of 15. That means I am willing to pay $15 for $1 of earnings in theory. Uh, and that I will want to see that improve as time goes by. It is. Um, it lets us compare to other companies in the same category. They have to be um, of the same industry. But firms with higher expected earnings will have a higher P/E ratio. And the P/E is the market price, and the E is the earnings per share, uh, or net income per share.
So here we're looking at price earnings ratios for a lot of companies and you can see that there's not a consistency across the board. Some companies have high numbers, some have low numbers. Some industries generally always have low numbers like the energy sector has low PE numbers in general. Uh, banks usually have lower numbers, uh, not as much anymore, but uh, also in major industrials will have lower numbers and then the higher numbers will be um, technology stocks and other higher or more aggressive stocks. In the income statement, uh, we have uh, some, some issues to try and figure out because you understand that the income statement is not the same as actual cash flow. We have, we are posting earnings or revenue that may have happened last quarter or next quarter, whereas cash flow is more like a checking account. It's actual cash flows that are being represented. So there are some limitations that has to be taken uh, for what it's worth. The balance sheet um, helps to compare the assets that the firm owns um, versus how they were financed. So on the left side of the balance sheet, we have assets or total assets. On the right side, we have liabilities and owner's equity. So the, the financial ratio is assets equals uh, liabilities plus owner's equity. And at the bottom, um, on the left and the right side, they should be exactly the same total. Balance sheet items are listed uh, by the um, order of liquidity or the ease of turning them into cash. Um, this chart is a little bit confusing because current assets include several things here on this list. Current assets are things that can be converted to cash within one year. That includes marketable securities, accounts receivable, and inventory. In theory, all of those could be converted to cash. Of course, uh, cash, which is the top one, is already uh, liquid and available. Also converted to cash, prepaid expenses um, and uh, investments. Or investments could be uh, longer than that if they're locked in, so they wouldn't be current. And then plant and equipment are fixed assets, and those cannot be easily converted to cash in theory, at, uh, at least at the price that they're being held. They may, uh, if you want to sell them right away, you may have to sell them at a, a significant discount. So those are not current. Liabilities are financial obligations of the firm and move from current liabilities, which are due within one year, to longer term. So current are at the top, and then long, longer term are below that, and still above owner's equity to the bottom right corner of the balance sheet. Short-term obligations include accounts payable, notes payable, and any accrued expenses, which are going to be paid, again, in less than 12 months. Those are in a category at the top right of the balance sheet. Stockholders' equity, that's the bottom right side of the balance sheet. It's the total contribution and ownership interest of preferred and common stockholders, all these categories. Remember that the statement of retained earnings is going to be a summary of the change in the um, portion of the balance sheet called the stockholders' equity section with the bottom right corner. Here we see a balance sheet. Now, usually, as I said before, it's left and right. In this case, it is um, uh, put uh, in single file, but still all the assets are considered to be on the left side and the liabilities and owner's equity are on the right side. And the total assets should equal the total liabilities and owner's equity. So any changes made to assets also must be made to liabilities and owner's equity to have a a um, summary at the at the end. Net worth and book value, the stockholders' equity. Um, market value is important to uh, some people, but book value is important to an accountant. Book value is the historical price that was paid, particularly for securities and for uh, fixed assets like land and buildings. So farther back that goes, the more inflation may have changed the actual price, but nonetheless, book value is the historical value uh, on the balance sheet, not the real value or the market value. Most of the prices are from an accountant's point of view. They are the historical cost, as I just said, and it is troublesome because they are not accurate in that sense. But that's what FASB, the uh, Financial Accounting Standards Board, says, is that... Um, there is uh, um, book value is more important than market value because it is the, to an accountant's point of view, the most accurate. 
So there may be differences per share because of the asset valuation, industry outlook, growth prospects, etc. Uh, we are not getting the, um, the correct um, evaluation of what an investor may look at. So it needs to be adjusted for um, the different types of um, uh, analysts and people who are looking at it, whether they're lending money or investing money, they're going to use the tools differently. We'll talk about that in other classes, uh, on other units, about how to use the tools. Even chapter three will start to get into that. So looking at this uh, chapter, or this uh, slide, we see that uh, UPS and some other major corporations we have the market value per share, that's what an investor would pay on the stock market today, versus the book value, what is uh, worth on paper to an accountant. You can see there may, can be a wide difference. And so I may say that still, uh, who is more right? Well, usually the investor is right because he's including more growth prospects. The statement of cash flow is, emphasizes the critical nature of cash flow to the operations of the firm. Cash flow is like blood to a company. If you don't have cash coming in and going out to pay your bills, then uh, there you are like the Dead Sea, and uh, something is going to you're going to end up in bankruptcy. We are contrasting the um, accrual method versus the cash method. The accrual method takes the um, uh, the costs and expenses and tries to get them equal in time frame to the um, revenues for the corporation. Cash method says, I can pay for it now, I can pay for it later, I will count it when the money comes in or when the money goes out. It's a different thing. I'll try to give some examples when we come together in class. There is some disadvantages in that it confuses people who are not familiar with the accrual method. The accrual method uh, is Im very important um, for reading a balance sheet. You need to understand um, what are the assumptions that are being made in, uh, in calculating these numbers and uh, how accurate they may be in the type of measurement you're making. The three primary sections of the statement of cash flows is operating, investing, and financing activities. We can see them there come in this order just like on the balance sheet to some degree, I mean on the uh, income statement. Operating activities are at the top, they're the most important. Those are the core purpose of the business. Cash flows from investing activities are buying new equipment and plant, uh, maybe land and uh, fixed assets, and then financing is about paying stocks and bond interest. So we see this in the same category here, operating, investing, and financing. On the statement of cash flows, they're kept in separate sections. We take them, and then they all are cash flows. Now, I would like to see, for um, uh, looking at the strength of the company, that the highest amount of cash flow is coming from the operating activities. The purpose for which this business exists is the products and services it provides to customers. So determining cash flows from operating activities, income from operations, uh, we need to either use the direct or their indirect method. Direct method just means we make an adjustment from the accrual to the cash accounting when we throw off the, um, uh, any depreciation uh, right away. In the indirect method, we start with net income at the starting point, and we adjust it by converting all of that to uh, cash flow only. Uh, in this uh, slide, it's showing... Uh, part of the, um, uh, the, the, the adjustments that are made in the indirect method. It's um, uh, less important for um, the speed with which we'll be going through this, but just understand that cash flow does not include depreciation. That is a non-cash uh, portion of the, uh, of the income statement. So in comparative balance sheets, we're comparing different years, different uh, usually uh, fiscal years. And so we can see some of the changes that are being taking place. This is important. We might even use more than two. Uh, this is a simplified one, but we could do three, four, five different years. So we understand uh, how liabilities have been shifting over the past and uh, how income is uh, uh, being retained, how stockholders' equity is being adjusted.
When looking at uh, operating activities here, we're getting to the definition of specific categories. Inventory is an operating activity. Cost of goods sold and uh, uh, other uh, prepaid expenses about the um, uh, rental and insurance might be all be part of operating activities. And so those are part of the core purposes of our business, money in or money out. Investing activities you seem to find here as um, plant and equipment increasing investments, decreasing investments, uh, those are going to be uh, in their own separate level, the, the middle group of investing activities. Usually this is a small part for most uh, uh, cash flow statements. There's not big changes from year to year unless they're in their early stages of their development or a major expansion project is going on. Determining cash flow from financing activities, uh, if some corporation has is highly leveraged, they're going to have a lot of interest uh, to uh, pay and uh, maybe buying buying uh, new bonds or I mean issuing new bonds to um, to lenders, issuing new stock. Uh, that's a way of bringing new capital into the business and then it also has to be paid. So I don't want to confuse the paying of my financing activities with the cost of selling and administration which is in the top category of operating income. So the op overall statement, cash flow statement, then takes those uh, three um, uh, items and uh, puts them in their proper perspective. And when I take the total amount of cash flow, uh, I am going to uh, take that as a ratio. Maybe it's 40%, 50% of cash flow comes from operating activities. And I'll compare that to previous years to know if that's getting better or getting worse. And so I want to know any increases. How is it being financed? Uh, is there a built up in, in uh, uh, liabilities? That means the next 12 months current liabilities. How are increases in long-term assets being financed? And I, I want to know um, uh, when that, those maturities will come on the, on the debt that's being added to my balance sheet. Depreciation, as I mentioned before, is a non-cash expense. It's not a new source of funds, meaning that we have spent something in the past. We bought a truck or we bought a piece of equipment, but we're pretending that we're spreading the cost by depreciating it over a period of time, maybe five to six or seven or eight years, whatever the um, GAAP gap um, allows us to do for that type of equipment. So the comparisons of accounting and cash flows, the accounting cash flows is like the income statement because that's the accrual method, whereas the cash flow statement is the cash method. The accrual method the, or the income statement is trying to match um, income, revenues, or sales, which are all the same thing, with expenses as though they occurred simultaneously in the same period, whereas cash flow is uh, making it accurate for the time frame that it actually happens. Free cash flow is another subset of total cash flow. Cash flow from operating activities minus capital expenditures minus dividends and the result is free cash flow that can be used for uh, growth and expansion. It's a given example leverage buyouts but there's many other uses of free cash flow meaning it's not encumbered by salaries and taxes and other things which are going to be part of that. Tax rates are um, uh, a major part of the, um, of the income statement. I want to know uh, how are you doing it, minimizing the taxes, not uh, anything illegal, but uh, there are all kinds of different uh, ways that the tax code allows um, depreciation and other means of reducing your tax liabilities, which can be a very significant part of the total um, uh, uh, cash uh, accounting system for the business. And the more you pay in taxes, the less there is for shareholders and the less there is for future expansion. So in this, uh, these slides, we'll see depreciation being used as a tax shield. Uh, and there are different methods that are allowed to optimize the right strategy for depreciation uh, so that um, you pay the least amount of tax.